God bless you. Welcome this morning to Greater Destiny Ministry live stream broadcast. I'm Bishop Jonathan Edward Locus Sr. We're glad to have you this morning. Pray that the Lord has blessed you and is still blessing you in your home and your family. And as we do every service, we start our service off with the word of prayer. Dear Father God, we come before you this morning thanking you for your many blessings, your love and kindness and your tender mercy. Lord, we thank you for making ways, opening doors and working miracles. You are a prayer answering God. We thank you, Lord, for how you let us lay down last night. And this morning, you touched us with the finger of love and allowed us to see a day that we've never seen before. Right now, Lord, we pray for the sick and the shedding. Pray for those that are in the hospitals, those that are on ventilators, those that are suffering from this COVID-19 virus. Lord, we pray indeed for our country that is in a state of turmoil. We pray, Lord, for the weak leadership that is showing forth its face in this time of tragedy. We pray, Lord, that you would heal our nation that is so deeply divided. We pray, Lord, that you speak peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your blood cover right now. Lord, we need you in a special and a mighty way. We ask, Lord, that you would bless us today. We ask you, Lord, that you would send a word that would help heal and deliver. Touch right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And these blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We thank you this morning for joining us on uh, this February the 14th, Valentine's Day. We thank God for you. And we would call your attention this morning to a scripture in the book of Revelation. Uh, Revelation chapter 22 and we are going to start reading at verse number 14. Revelation 22 14 and we will read down to and including verse number 16. And it reads such as, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. May the Lord add a blessing to readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Uh, that 13th verse says, for without or outside, or those that are excluded, for without our dogs and sorcerers, whoremongers, murders, idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. And we use the subject this morning, everybody is not going to heaven. Everybody is not going to be included. Um, this is something that we're not making up. Uh, this is according to the scripture. Uh, we have to understand, and, and he says this in verse number, this is Jesus talking in verse number 16, he said, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. You know who the angel is? The angel is the preacher. The preacher should be testifying of these things. He should be letting the church know 
that everybody is, and certainly these things that I mentioned, are not going into the kingdom. So these are these are the things that we need to understand when we start talking about salvation. Now the call for salvation is universal. It's everybody has a chance to be saved. But the key is, are they going to take advantage of that opportunity? And this is what we have to we have to understand. There is a provision to going to heaven or to entering in in the city. And the key to entering in, the key to it, is the lifestyle that we live. A tree is known by the fruit that it bears. So we can't just say, I believe or I have faith in Jesus Christ and then live any type of life. Because the Bible tells us clearly faith without works is dead. So those are things we have to we have to understand. We have to be clear about these things. Well somebody might say, Well, uh Bishop, you're judging. You can't you can't say who gonna be saved and who's not gonna be saved. Number one, I'm not saying it. Number one, the Bible's telling you this. That's number one. And then if you look if you look at scripture, scripture also be, points out plainly, very clearly, if we can get to an understanding. If you go to first Corinthians chapter number two, uh, but let's start at verse number 14. It says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Now, I want you to pick up on this. He says, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. See, a man that is spiritual, he is in a position to know. That's why he said he judges all things. Look what he said. Yet he himself is judged of no man. Because a man does not have the understanding or the spiritual knowledge to understand what he's talking about. So this is, and it said in verse 16, For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. See, we have the mind of Christ or spiritual a spiritual mind, we can say these things. And, and and like the scripture said, then he is judge of no man. Because the natural man does not have an understanding. He does not know. So this is what we're trying to make clear. That 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 to be saved and, and, and one scripture in Ephesians chapter one, verse number thirteen, lets us know that God puts his seal his seal of approval upon those people that are saved. And that's another thing. We have to, uh, people just don't don't get it or know the importance of the Holy Ghost. This is very important. Look at that first chapter. Look at that first chapter, verse number 13, Ephesians. It said, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of of your salvation. You see the importance of the gospel? I'm not talking about foolish man-made stuff. I'm talking about the gospel. You see, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel, you see that? Of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believe it, first you hear it, once you believe it, ye are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. God puts his seal of approval on us. But there's a process there. You have to hear the truth. You have to accept the truth. And then we are sealed by his spirit. So that, 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 that's a key. The government has a seal that it puts on uh, uh, even meat that's, that, that's grade A. They seal it let you know this comes from the government. This is, a, this is supposed to be all right. This just didn't come from anywhere. And this is what the Lord is letting us know. 
that these things are important and we have to uh, we have to understand that all that is being accepted in churches is not necessarily the truth according to the Word of God now when you say everybody's not going to heaven we are not just talking about people that's in the world doing all kind of terrible horrible things I'm talking about people that sitting up in church under doctrine that is not true or things that are not in line with the scripture if you believe that you're responsible for that that's why the Bible says you shall know the truth that's the key what we have to understand now if you go back over to that scripture let's go back over to Revelation when it, when it talks about those that are not going to be entering in it gives us very 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 clear instructions look what look look what it says for without go to verse number 20 verse number 15 for without are dogs that's the first one he talks about dogs now these dogs here are false teachers these are false teachers teaching false doctrines heretics, heresies, all these things that are not in line with scripture and people are being caught up in this. This will send you to hell just as quick as anything else. And that's the key. You you, you need to know what is really in line with the Bible. He said these are dogs. Now if you look at uh, Philippians Chapter number 3, verse number 2, it says, Beware of dogs, these workers of concision. These are false teachers, false prophets that have fooled people. And people have gotten persuaded believing the wrong thing. False teachers. And... A key today, you have a lot of this going on. You really saw it. It, it. it came out blatantly in this last election where you had so many, and I'm not talking about small time storefront preachers. I'm talking about national televised evangelists on television talking about Donald Trump was going to win. Now they were calling that and they, some preachers were going so far to say if you voted for Biden that your family was going to be cursed. You got a lot of people believing that. Uh, if you look in the book and, and you say, well, how, how, do you, how do you know that they were or they, that they are false preachers or false teachers? That's very simple. Go to Deuteronomy. Go to Deuteronomy. Chapter number eighteen. And we can we can we can get an understanding on this. I mean it's clear. People just take just take anything and just go along with it. I mean they were they were talking about he was gonna win, uh, uh and then after he lost they were talking about the the, the 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 election was rigged and all that. No, you said he was gonna win. Now if the Lord had said this man was gonna win I don't care what happened in that election. He would have won. That's the key right there. You had uh, Paula White on television praying for him to win. Talking about she was calling down angels out of Africa. What type of foolishness is that? Look at the 18th chapter. Look at the 18th chapter. You, we better get an understanding of what we're following and what we're listening to. Look at this. It says... When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing for which the Lord hath not spoken. So he said, if he says it, that the Lord spoke it, and it does not come to pass, then the Lord didn't speak it. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Now that's the key right there. That's simple. That's not how will this happen and that happen. Uh-uh. If God said that, 
it will come to pass. Simple as that. And that's the first thing that scripture says. Beware of dogs. Beware of false teachers. False preachers. That speak presumptuously. That get up and say what they want to say. What they want to see. Yeah. Now that's the difference if the man gets up and say. I want Donald Trump to win. But to get up and say. He's going to win. The Lord told me he was going to win. Uh uh. No ma'am. No sir. That's not right, walking or riding. And we have to be aware of these things. And, and, and here's the sad part about this. There are thousands. There could even be millions of folks following these people. Honey, this is the, this, this, this ain't right. He said beware of them. Beware of these false things. We have to beware of false doctrines. Things that people are teaching now that, that's, that's just not true. It's just not true. There's a lot. Of, and and, and you, you said, why are you saying that? There's so many different doctrines, uh, so many dogmas, so many different ideologies that the people are getting caught up in all kinds of stuff that does not line up with the Bible. There's a lot of man-made doctrine, a lot of man-made theories that are not true. And you just have to have an understanding. And these things give people false hope. There's no such thing as a purgatory. That, that, that place you go until you get ready to go to heaven. Mm -mm. There's only two places. There's heaven and hell and that's it. That's all. Now even even a, 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 a man that I thought had had a, a really good ministry. Uh, Carlton Pearson. He had a good ministry. I remember he used to do that Azusa thing. I thought that was good. But see he got caught up in the wrong thing. Talking about it wasn't a hell. What 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 happens? What what happens when the Bible? What happens when your mind says that, but the Bible tells you clearly something different? You got to understand what you are. And and some people are so caught up in 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 ministries, in church buildings that they can't see the truth. That's a that's a key. If you don't come, I don't care how good of a person you are. I don't care how sincere you are. If you are caught up in the wrong thing, the false doctrine things that are not according to Christ, and even you got a good heart and all that, if you do not come out of that, you are going to be lost. And that's just the bottom line. Well, I know I'm in the truth. I what if it's if it's the truth according to Scripture. If what is being taught to you lines up with the Bible, I'm talking about the doctrine. I'm talking about the attitude, the behavior, lines up with the doctrine of Christ. Paul said, "Follow me, and I'll follow Christ." That's the key. That's the key right there. The Bible says the blind lead the blind. They both going to end up in the ditch. Those are things we have to we have to uh, 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 be aware of. You can't get caught up in false doctrine just because it's something that sounds good. That's that, that's the key, and, and, and that's that's where we are. Let's look in Galatians. Let's look in, look in Galatians right here. Chapter number 1, verse number 6. Look what it says here. He said, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. See, whatever called us, the Lord called us into Christianity or to salvation. That's what we should stay with. He said, you shouldn't be caught up caught up in another another gospel look what he says which is not another but there be some that trouble you look at this and would pervert the gospel of Christ that's where you're at now people are perverting the gospel of Christ and people in churches jumping up and down going crazy over this stuff and it's not of God 
is not of God. And the reason they jumping up and down because they don't know. That's the key. You got to know for yourself. You need to read the Bible yourself. Amen. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't get caught up in nothing in, in church where nobody never opens the Bible and never calls a scripture and never talks out of the Bible. He's just up rambling on what he thinks. Uh uh. No, ma'am, and no, sir. No. Look at this. Verse, look at verse number 8. It said, But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Mm -hmm. You see that? It said an angel from heaven. If an angel come down from heaven and preach any other than this gospel, it said let him be accursed. Mm -hmm. He said, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye have received, let him be a curse. You see that? The gospel, that's out of scripture. That's the, that's the birth, life, and death of Jesus Christ. That, that, that's, that, that's the key right there. And St. John 14 and 6 says, Jesus says, I am the way. I am the way. Not ways. The way. The truth and the life. I'm the way. So all this other stuff people are trying to, trying to uh, 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 put in their own. I, 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 I even heard uh, uh, T.D. Jakes in the interview said that, that the church can coexist with homosexuality. He said everybody has their own church. It's up to them what they believe. Uh-uh, no. What is going on here? The Bible talks plainly against these things. And we are being taught to accept them. You matter of fact, today a lot of these guys are not more or less preachers. They're nothing but motivational speakers. They're just there to motivate you. But the gospel has to be preached. The gospel has to be preached. It's not that. And, and, and let me tell you something. The gospel is good news. But when you get into the, the doctrine and being taught about what is right and what is wrong, if I am wrong, then that scripture is there to help straighten me out. Now, while I'm getting straightened out, I might not be happy by what is being said. But that is necessary for me to get my life in order. So I can be ready when Jesus comes. These are the things. This is what we're talking about when he talks about salvation. And the first thing he tells you is beware. Or who's not going in is dogs. False teachers. And honey, you got a bunch of them around here now. And people lapping up after this stuff. Caught up in all this mess. It's not of God. We have to stay with and know the truth. That's the key. You got to stay with the truth. I don't care how many people going. The Bible said it's a broad way and many enter therein. But straight is the gate and narrow is the way and few few listen to that few there be that find it. When, 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 when God sent the flood at the time of Noah, how many folk were saved out of the whole world? Eight. Eight people were saved, Noah and his family. After 120 years of preaching, eight people. So don't 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 feel bad if 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 you stand with the truth and you're not in the majority. Uh uh, don't feel bad about that. I don't care if the, if, if the church you in got a handful of folk. If the truth is being preached, honey, you in the right place. You're in the right place. Because that's what, that's what it's going to take for us to get saved and for us to stay saved. He also talks about in, in that uh, 22nd chapter, he talks about uh, whoremongers being excluded 
uh, the Bible also tells us in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 9, it gives us some clarity there too. It says, know, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, he, puts, he poses that question. Know ye not that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Look at that. Be not deceived. Don't be fooled. Neither fornicators. Now he's saying, he's saying the word here is fornicators, which is sex outside of marriage. In uh, Revelations, he calls it whoremongers. You're basically looking at the same time, the same thing. Uh, uh, th those whoremongers were almost on the same line as a prostitute. But he says these fornicators, uh, people just get online and meet folk online and you just meet them up and go to sleeping with them. And then come to church talking about you, you love the Lord, honey. You have to get your life in order. That's all it is to it. You can't do it. Well, this is just the way I feel. Well, don't get caught up on feeling. A feeling to send you to hell. They'll fool you. Your feelings will fool you. You have to go by what you hear. Faith come by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Sure, 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 sure. Just, just, just like Isaac got fooled. He got fooled. He got fooled by Jacob. Because he was feeling him. He felt him instead of listening to the voice. And you're going to get fooled if you keep going by your feelings. If you are uh, uh, trying to get in a situation and you're trying to live holy and sanctified and, 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 and there's a man trying to get you to do things you uh, know you're not supposed to do, then you stick with what you have heard, not go by what your feelings. Now that's that, that's the key right there. Don't go don't, because cause the Bible teaches against that. I don't care how you feel. Sure. These are things we have to understand. It talks about fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, infeminate. Now, infeminate, the, the, the Greek word for infeminate means soft. Mm -hmm. so, uh, that, that, that reference is to uh, um, a man that acts like a woman. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what he's talking about there. That's why he says, uh, after that, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. That's homosexuality. Mm -hmm. That that's men with men. So the, these things, see that that that's talking about all these old terrible shows you see on TV for men dressing up like women. Mm -hmm. That's that that's terrible. That's terrible. No, and, and getting entertained by that. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. That's homosexuality. Mm -hmm. These things are not going there. I don't care how funny people think it is. It's not funny. Look at that. Look at that. So these are things we have to understand. Now, well, you you look at you might look at somebody and say, well, what if what if I've gotten caught up or have been caught up in those type of things? Well, honey, let me tell you something. All of us, every last one of us, have had to be delivered from something. And, st <laughs> and like this, still need deliverance. Mm -hmm. So don't 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 feel bad behind that. But there's something we need to understand that can be done. Look at Ephesians chapter number five. Let's look at that. We we can we can get a clear understanding on those things. See the gospel. The gospel is good news. It's good news. Uh, look at verse, uh, uh, I think I, I'll go to 25, 525. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So it, he describes the relationship between Christ and the church as that of a husband and a wife. He is describing of two people living together. Husband and wife. I don't know why people get caught up in these things, and I don't understand. It, it, it's not going to do. A, a woman have to think more of herself. 
you get get with a man that has two or three children uh, by this man and then wonder why y'all ain't getting married. Uh-uh. No. And then you got them three children and the next thing you know, what is he doing? Messing around with somebody else. Simple as that. Come on. That's what it says. Look what it says. Husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. See, that's, that's a relationship. When a man love a woman to the point where he'll sacrifice for her and his family. See, I was always taught if, 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 if the man don't have nothing, a, a lot, make sure your children and your wife have something. Make sure they have stuff to eat and clothes to wear. You out looking sharp and they don't have nothing. No, no. He gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. What cleans us up? The word of God. When we accept it, I don't care what you've been into, what you've done. That word will clean you up. Look, that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. That's what the Lord is looking for. And what will get what 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 will get us like that? God's word. They used to sing a song years ago. God's word brought me out. And honey, that is that is certainly that is certainly bring you out. Saint John fifteen and three. You don't have to wait till tomorrow. You be clean right now. St. John 15 and 3 says, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. So the word that I'm speaking to you right now will cleanse you right at this point. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is just believe it. No man should be lost. No woman should be lost. But you and I have to get the truth and hold on to it. That's the key. That's the only thing that's going to help us in this day and time and what is going to cause us to be saved from the wrath of God. We have to hold on to the truth. Get it and hold on to it and that will save you. That will deliver you in this terrible time that we live in. Honey, time, we, look, let me tell you something. We are right at the cusp, right at the end time, where Jesus is on his way back. And people are still up in pulpits talking foolishness, stuff that's not, don't have nothing to do with nothing. No, no. We have to, we have to honor God by his word. And if we honor that word, and if we believe it, honey, you'll be saved. You'll be saved. And, 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 and not just be saved. God's ready to save right now. If you can believe on me as the scripture has said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now is the time. Today is the day of salvation. We certainly pray this morning that something has been said to help you because like the uh, our subject said, everybody's not going to heaven. The Bible tells us if a tree falls to the north or to the south, wherever it falls, that's where it's going to lay. You can't live like the devil and then all of a sudden by the time you die, you heaven bound. No, no, no. I don't care what the preacher say. He lying. No. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. No. The way you live, the way you die, that's it. That's it. And don't even talk about no mess, about no deathbed salvation, honey. Today when you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the time. Sure. Come on. Now is the time. We, we thank God for you. I might, I might uh, 
get a little animated about this, but uh, this is my passion. Uh, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Mm -hmm. What will it profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? Mm -hmm. It's not worth it. Uh, if you have enjoyed the message today, it will be on uh, my wife's Facebook page, Valerie Locust, for two days, then it will be moved to my YouTube channel, mm -hmm. one day, mm -hmm. okay, it'll be on there one day, then it will be moved to my YouTube channel, mm -hmm. you can get that by logging in Bishop Jonathan E. Locust, mm -hmm. you can get any message on Sunday or Wednesday night, so you can get any of them. Mm -hmm. any of those uh, so go to Bishop Jonathan E. Locus on my YouTube if you would like to be a blessing to the ministry please feel free to do so cash app cash app dollar sign ministry m-i-n-i-s-t-r-y 2021 dollar sign ministry 2021 and if you do that, we will certainly, certainly appreciate it. We thank God for you today. We pray that something has been said to help you along the way. God bless you and keep you. It is our prayer. And if the Lord say the same, we will join you again on Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. God bless you.